why I suddenly just decided to be a YouTube fave, but here we are. Um... You're not about to get on this flight, sis. I was interrogated for just under two hours. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name's Hani. I'm a junior doctor from London. I make videos about skincare and like medical school and that kind of thing. And today I want to talk about how I have COVID, but my skin is the best it's ever been. And I want to tell you how I did that. So if you're interested, please keep watching. copyright it's it that's enough of that um yeah basically yeah it's been a hot minute and do you know what like so much has happened like it's actually been the craziest busiest time so okay so just off the top of my head we moved house had to we got an unfurnished place so we had to buy furniture getting the furniture delivered that was a whole other story i was sleeping and sitting on the floor for two weeks straight like legit doing everything sat on the floor um what else i got laser eye surgery which was crazy i actually wanted to vlog it but i had such a bad experience like i don't want to say too much and put people off because it overall was fine and like i'm glad for where i am now like my eyesight is really good i can see but yeah that shit was wild that shit was intense i've been working on a covid ward um and we have a rotation so people always ask me what kind of doctor are you in the uk the way it works is you finish medical school you're a doctor but then you're just a doctor for like i would say like two to five years depending on what you end up specializing in but in that time you're a junior doctor and you work in all the different specialties essentially um so you have like a really broad based training and then you specialize whereas i know in like america you finish medical school and you immediately start like cardiology or you know neurology training or whatever it is whereas here you're just like a doctor for a long time which is kind of cool i kind of prefer that because you get more time to choose anyway i digress yes yeah, so i was working on a covid ward and then i've switched on to another covid ward and um yes <laughs> your girl got covid i have covid right now which is why i might sound a bit unwell like a bit nasally like i don't if you're new here i don't normally sound like this i hope anyway in all seriousness today's the first day that i've been like well enough to actually um film and so i thought let me make the most of this opportunity especially because my work hours are just kind of crazy at the moment obviously because of all the covid stuff but yeah like i really have missed youtube and skincare and all of those things so yeah i'm back back with covid um and i don't know if you can tell i don't want to get too close and ruin the camera because it took me way too long to set this up uh -huh. The bar is in hell for me. I don't have to do any of this. But yeah, my skin has been amazing. That's like the one good thing that came out of COVID. Um, and I want to share my like pandemic skincare tips. Obviously, if you're not well, that should be the priority. That's the most important thing to focus on. This whole, let me just say this now. This whole video is kind of frivolous. Obviously, if you're not well, go to the hospital. If you have COVID, your skin should be the least of your concerns. Focus on optimizing your health first. You know, take your temperature regularly, get a pulse oximeter. Let me see if I have one. Um, mine is here something, yeah, one of these thingies. You put it on your finger. Um, my best friend got this for me. You put it on your finger, it tells you what your like oxygen levels are. If it's below 94, please God, don't be below 94. What does mine say? Okay, it's still registering. Okay, 99, good. Um, anyway, if yours is below 94, go to the hospital immediately do all the things you can to like optimize your health first that's the most important thing but if like me you're <clears throat> you don't feel amazing but you're well enough to do other things and you're kind of bored because you're just at home doing nothing i think skincare is a, is a great place to start but that obviously is going to be secondary to your health so let me just start there yeah let's get that preface out of the way because i'm obviously not saying do skincare if you have covid like obviously focus on the covid also read my covid experience it was kind of um it was very strange because i never had a cough or a fever at any point um i just had a cold i was sneezing loads i definitely did have a cold initially and then i don't even want to get into the story of how i got covid if you follow me on twitter you've probably seen that you've, yeah i'm not going to get into it because i'm not trying to get in trouble but it was not ideal it's not a great way to get covid but yeah alas i have covid um yeah i had a cold i was just sneezing loads and then i started getting really bad headaches 
and then a few days later I just was really really short of breath um, and as soon as I got the headaches because headaches are quite sneezing is not really a COVID thing at all headaches are as soon as I started getting headaches I went to my hospital and I got COVID test it came back positive so I've been in isolation since which is not great um, but also I was thinking like <laughs> I was gonna say I'm I'm back and I'm better like you know your girl is back I'm back and I'm not better at all like this is this is not good but i'm back nonetheless um and having some time off has in a weird way like been quite nice because obviously i've moved into a new place there were just a few things that needed organizing that i just hadn't gotten around to which i've now like fully got around to which was kind of nice but yeah um my skin's been really good covid has been great for my skin and i kind of just thought if i'm gonna be ill let me look good while doing it you know like let me at least have my skin while i'm ill so we are here the other thing is so many people have left really nice comments on my other videos being like you know the skincare routine the high pigmentation one it works really well and you know if you have a skincare like as i said you know i've always wanted a skincare line uh, or i've always wanted to produce skincare products like that i've thought up because that's what i've done for my own skin over the years like i've just concocted things and figured out how to like get good skin because i've had really bad skin in like more than one different way i said this last time as well but like i've had acne i've had really inflamed irritated skin i've had um my i have a condition that predisposes me to allergic reactions so i've had like really really allergic peely and in, uh, inflammatory skin i've had hormonal acne i've had obviously really bad hyperpigmentation before so i feel like i've run the whole spectrum of like bad skin and i've come out the other side and um i kind of recognize my privilege in being able to like read scientific papers and make sense of them and you, you know reverse engineer that knowledge to make stuff for myself so i kind of just thought you know i'd always love to have a skincare line for other people and loads of people were like if you ever have a skincare line we'll be the first ones to buy stuff which is such a nice thing to say thank you like just emboldening my, me and my dream like it's probably cute of you guys like i really love comments like that but um yeah something really exciting happened on that front so i'm not going to say anything more because i've said i can't say anything else but just know that like there's things going on in the background the other thing is i want to say i'm realizing i'm speaking really really fast um and the reason i'm doing that is because i'm so out of breath like covid covid up 300 honey down 300 like because that is one thing i'm so out of breath all the time that i'm now having to speak really really fast to get everything i want to say out between each breath does that make sense um like i'm i feel like i'm too young for these complications <laughs> like i'm really really grateful that i've been as well as i have been like even the fact that i'm able to make a youtube video while i have covid is mad privilege but yeah like i really hope this tachypnea the fast breathing goes away because <sighs> yeah i'm not uh i'm not this is not something i would uh, would have wanted one thing i would say that i wish i did before getting covid um is exercise because you can improve your lung capacity by exercise and I feel like I didn't have a great baseline because I'm not that fit. Uh, but if I had exercised more and had like had been fitter, had a better lung capacity, I feel like the insult to my lungs would have been less because I would have had more lung capacity in the first place. Does that make sense? Like if I was losing 30% capacity, it wouldn't have been as bad as like what I'm experiencing now. Because now like I really can't breathe that well. Um, today, honestly, today is fine. But on previous days, like I was just so short of breath, like gasping constantly. That was kind of my main symptom. But anyway, I kind of want to tell you what things I've been doing for my skin and you guys can tell me what you think about the things I've been doing for my skin. And essentially, um, I think I said this before, but I think COVID, if you're well and given all the caveats I said before, if you're well, it can be a really great time to get your skin together because you're at home. Um, no one's going to see you with all these like things slathered on your face. You can kind of, you know, do loads of different treatments. So I guess for me broadly, I think there's two things you could be doing during COVID to like optimize your skin. I think you could either be using actives, which are things that actively kind of work to produce an effect in your skin. So you could be using actives that, you know, help with pigmentation issues. You could be using actives that help with things like acne. You could be using actives that um, are anti-inflammatory. Whereas, um, the other thing I think you could be doing, which would really benefit your skin, is to rebuild your lipid barrier. So your lipid barrier is, I've got a whole video on this, but is essentially kind of the layer of your skin that keeps the nasties out and pulls good things like water in. Um, and if you've got a really healthy lipid barrier, if you've got that barrier layer of your skin, if it's really intact, then actually it can prevent things like acne, it can, um, 
your skin will look like really moisturized and plump and supple um having a good lipid barrier prevents inflammation it prevents getting things like hyperpigmentation down the line and for me that's kind of been my main aim especially because like honestly covid had me down bad how did i have a cold and covid at the same time like i feel played um my immune system definitely like shakes me but yeah so for me because i was so ill blowing my nose and sneezing so much i always get really dry around like my nose and mouth it gets really cracked and fissured i feel like a lot of people probably have that um, and so for me my main aim was just preventing that and kind of in the process of doing that my skin just became really really good and i'll tell you exactly what i did so my main thing was kind of just hydrating the skin as much as possible making sure there was as much water and so when we think about moisture in the skin and having like supple moisturized skin all you're trying to do is increase the amount of water in the skin and so the way you do that is this is kind of the basic framework on wet skin you apply a moisturizer you can apply a serum as well and then you kind of want to seal it in with what we call an occlusive an occlusive is any product that forms a thick barrier that prevents water loss through the skin water loss through the skin is called trans epidermal water loss and essentially you're kind of sealing it in um, so that was kind of all i did so all i've been doing is on wet skin applying a moisturizing applying um, an occlusive on top and also to increase the humidity in the room i've also been using a humidifier just because my sinuses um your nasal passages the passages inside your nose and mouth get really really dried out if you have a cold or any kind of respiratory infection just because of the increased respirations you're breathing so much that you're you're kind of losing <laughs> why am i okay sorry i panted but when you go or breathing that much through your nose you're literally just drying out all the mucous membranes because you're losing water through all of those places so using a humidifier let me show you my humidifier actually okay so this is my humidifier i honestly couldn't even tell you what brand it is or anything i just bought it off amazon and can you see that it's producing a lot of can you see that so i just have been sleeping with that on just to increase the amount of moisture in the air and that's been one thing that's really been preventing my nasal pass okay that's one thing that's been really preventing my nasal passages from getting like super dried out um i'll put to be honest i think they all do the same thing but this is the one i have i can link it below if anyone wants so the first thing i use is this um essence this is the snail mucin power essence by cos rx i hope you can see that okay i feel like this hand thing is literally the first time i felt like an actual youtuber but go off <laughs> so yeah i've been using this this is it's got a lot of hyaluronic acid in which is a humectant which means it pulls water into the skin which is why the humidifier which was my previous step is so important if there's a lot of moisture in the air the hyaluronic acid has water to pull into your skin does that make sense um, alternatively another really important thing to do if you don't have humidifier or in general is to just apply products onto a wet face if you've got water on your face these things when they're pulling water into your skin they have water to pull from because actually um, humectants can make your skin drier and more dehydrated if you don't have enough water in your skin so what they'll do is they'll pull water from the deeper layers of the skin such as the dermis they'll pull water that way rather than that way does that make sense so they'll pull water out of your skin rather than into your skin if there's not enough water in the environment surrounding your skin so a really good way to go around this is to literally just have water on your skin when you apply this the next thing i do is i apply my moisturizer um literally just use any moisturizers for me a moisturizer i want it to be three things i want it to be hypoallergenic i want it to be non-comedogenic so it doesn't cause spots and i want it to be non-sensitizing i have extremely sensitive skin i want something that's not going to cause any allergic reactions or anything um and my favorite moisturizer i weirdly can't find so what i've been using is um mine's work because it's literally come out of the shower is this um Cetra burn just use any cream that's like rich doesn't have fragrance in just any creamy cream that just doesn't really have any ingredients in honestly like the less fragrance than the less ingredient heavy the better so when people use like la mer and really expensive stuff i'm like honestly like e45 i don't know if you have e45 in america e45 um i really like the glossier not the rich one because i have that here and it's got perfume in it which i don't like the glossier cream just anything that's unscented essentially yeah just put a thick layer of that on top of 
this so the last part of the routine was the occlusive so if you want things to get really absorbed into the skin you put an occlusive on which is just um, any product that forms a thick seal between your skin and the environment and occlusives are really good because they prevent water loss through the skin which is known as trans epidermal water loss and i've been using this lano lips it's called lano lips it's marketed as a lip balm but it's basically pretty much just lanolin which is is that doing something which is an amazing occlusive it's a grease that comes from sheep's wool and so because of that it's not vegan so if you're not vegan i don't recommend this an alternative would be something like vaseline which i'm going to get onto in a sec because i get dragged all the time for recommending vaseline but vaseline is an amazing occlusive so an occlusive is anything that forms a seal between your skin and the outer environment and what it means is that if you've got products on your skin they actually really get absorbed into your skin they don't just you know leave but also it means that any water that's in your skin any moisture stays there it doesn't um it doesn't evaporate out of the skin if the room's hot or anything for example the water in your skin stays there and so your skin becomes really moist and supple if you've got an occlusive on top for me because around my mouth and nose gets really really dry and flaky when i'm not well i put the occlusive on i put it around my mouth and nose mainly i don't i, can't, I sometimes put it on my whole face but that's not always the priority and lanolin is the one i've been this product is called lanolips it's what i've been using at the moment another really good alternative is aquaphor you can see i've i've recommended this before mine is like it's like really hard to get through like you use so little of it and mine is like almost done neither of these are vegan because aquaphor contains lanolin and lanolin is a product derived from sheep it sounds great it's like they call it wool wax it comes from sheep's wool so if you're vegan but neither of these are um an option um vaseline is a really good occlusive as well i always get drags for recommending vaseline let me tell you right now why vaseline isn't going to break you out because everyone in the comments is always like you guys always drag me, so the comments are always like, wow, I was really enjoying the routine and then I'm not gonna lie, I flinched when I saw that she said Vaseline and things like that. Vaseline isn't gonna break you out. I might even make a whole separate video on this, but I'll give you a quick primer on why Vaseline isn't gonna break you out. Vaseline, first of all, is not comedogenic. It doesn't promote acne, it doesn't cause acne. It also doesn't, um, so there's a scale that rates how comedogenic different things are, so um, how likely they are to cause acne. Vaseline is literally one out of five on the official scale. Another thing is Vaseline doesn't block your pores. The particles are too big to block the, uh, to enter the sebaceous follicles, which are the pores, so it doesn't, it doesn't block the pores. What it does do is it creates that seal between your skin and the environment. And so if your skin isn't clean, if it's dirty, for example, if you haven't washed your face properly and then you put Vaseline on, you are trapping a layer of dirt. Um, under your skin and so with any occlusive so vaseline or either of these you want to make sure that you're applying it to a clean face um the other thing is because you've got that barrier there things like sweat and stuff will get trapped under that barrier so what i would say is in the morning wash it off yeah so it's good in that it traps it seals good things in if you've got good things underneath but if you've got bad things underneath like sweat or dirty skin or makeup it's going to trap those things in so just as long as you're applying it to a clean face and as long as you're washing it off in the morning so that your skin can breathe essentially not your skin doesn't literally breathe but you know what i mean as long as you're uh washing it off in the morning so that your skin can you know sweat and just naturally um you know excrete sweat and things like that then there's really no issues and it has so many benefits for your skin um, but i think it's really worth it the other really important thing to remember is that vaseline is like chemically so benign it really does nothing it's like very very hypoallergenic it doesn't cause spots it's non-comedogenic as we said so vaseline isn't going to break you out the only thing it really does is it prevents water loss through the skin trans epidermal water loss it's literally literally amazing the other thing is vaseline is vegan so if you can't use either of these because you're a vegan you can use vaseline the only reasonable thing i would argue that i think is a fair criticism of vaseline is that it's produced as a byproduct of like crude oil and like fossil fuels and stuff like that so i understand that there's an environmental concern but um it's produced as a byproduct so it's not you know we don't mine fossil fuels to produce vaseline we mine fossil fuels and then we make vaseline with some of the things we get as a result of mining fossil fuels so yeah vaseline isn't going to break you out and it's an amazing occlusive the other thing i would recommend is the um pulp pul ointment i don't know how you pronounce it pulp pul ointment i don't know where mine is i think it might be at my mom's house i think it's mostly vaseline essentially it's mostly 
uh, petrolatum jelly, which is Vaseline. Well, which is what Vaseline is. Yeah, Vaseline is amazing. There's too much Vaseline slander, please. If you're going to take anything from this video, take away that Vaseline is actually really good for your skin, um, if used appropriately. And essentially, yeah, so with all of those things, I really like fixed up my moisture barrier and now my skin is looking really nice, like if I say so myself. Um, and I haven't been using any treatments or any actives on my skin and it's just been really behaving well. And I think it's because like it's internally really nourished. And I think that, you know, other people could hopefully benefit from this little routine as well. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. If I was speaking fast, it's because I'm so out of breath because of the COVID. Um, but otherwise, I hope everyone is safe and looking after themselves. And I hope you guys, you know, washing your hands and protecting yourselves. And as I said before, skincare is not the most important thing. But if you're well enough to look after your skin, it can be like a source of comfort, like having a routine and having a, a skincare routine that you do. Anyway, I'm sending you guys like loads of love and I'm wishing everyone good health. And bye guys, take care. Yeah, dirty, dirty. How we let it get like this? I don't know.